Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland, and in this episode, we're going to be reviewing the latest edition of the Pro Sim Light sequential shifter from the guys at Pro Sim. Now, you may have already seen a review that I did on the version one of the sequential shifter, which, by the way, I consider to be the best feeling sequential shifter I've ever had in my hands to date. Well, this version two actually has implemented some noise reduction design improvements. So we're going to actually see how much quieter it is based against the, the version one sequential shifter that I still have here. So let's get to it. Now we'll take a closer look and I'm going to combine it with a look inside on this segment also because it just kind of flows naturally that way. I also have the version one, the shifter back here in the rear and obviously this is the version two and really the there's a couple of things from the outside before we look on the inside that differentiates these two shifters right away you can see that the v1 which is this one back here you can see the plate on it so it doesn't have anything on it just the light and then the v2 is this one it actually has a v2 next to the light and other they're very similar in build as you might expect which is a good thing to me because it's a great shifter and I didn't want to see too much change on it and maybe go the wrong way as far as the quality of the shifting that you get out of these. So first off, if you look here, you can see the tensioner on the V2 is, well, much taller than the tensioner over here on the V1. And a few other things are different too. As we look inside, we'll see that. We'll also see that the shifter level back here on the V1 is actually taller or it sits taller than the one in the V2, but the V2 and the V1 shifter levers are still the same length. It's just you can see this one is actually shifting, sitting, right, it's shifting, but it's sitting lower in the frame than the one back here on the version one. So that's what makes it look higher. And of course, you can see how this one, the whole thing has been lowered down as far as in the rear. You can see how the angle here goes down versus the less of an angle going down on the V1. So even when you put them behind it, you can see the differences here. And the front part is the same height of these plates. I actually measured it, even though it might look a little different because of the aspect ratio we're getting with the V1 sitting behind the V2. So other than that, they're very similar as far as the mechanisms and how everything works. It's just They've just made some improvements to make it quieter, basically. And we're going to look at these comparisons as we go along here. Now, we're still using, we'll just use the, ver the version 2 for this, still using the excellent hall sensors in here for our shifting. And you can see that how that works because you've got a magnet on one side and then the sensor on the other that's wired to the very nice Bodner 0386 USB board. And that's up here on the front. You can't really see the number in there, but that's what it is. And of course, that's wired directly into that. And We'll never have a problem as far as wear, any worry with that, with these magnetic sensors in here. Very good system to be using. And you can tell probably already, if you've looked at the P1 video, that this is a much quieter version. And there's reasons for that. What we'll do is we'll compare the differences as we go along here. The first thing I want to look at is the claw here. Now. First off, let's just see how the mechanism will work if you guys haven't seen this before. And what happens is there's a claw here that rides up, okay? And it rides up over these little arms that stick out, all right? These little tabs that are sticking out of the main gear here. And as we pull the shifter, you can see the claw is actually going to turn. It catches, depending on which direction we're going in. We can go frontwards or backwards. I'm just going frontwards because it's easy for me to catch my thumb over here and do it so you guys can see what's going on. But it works obviously the same way going the other way. So it catches that little arm sticking out on the gear and pushes it down. And as it does that, it needs to come back over. You see the arm in the back now. It's behind it. It will actually come back up and over that and then come back down. You can hear a little click noise. So that's how we're actually manipulating this big gear here. And that gives us the sensation of the, if this gear was actually attached to a sequential gearboxes selector rod that rides on top of the actual gears that actually makes the selection. That's what you would be turning. And it feels like you're really turning one of those when you use this shifter. And that's why it's so good. And you can see that there's a cam on top that's riding 
over those grooves there. But we'll get to one thing at a time here. Now, it's quieter for a couple of reasons here. First off, the claw itself is still the same heat-treated claw that's over there in the version 1. But under here, if we look underneath, there's actually a rubber, it just went back down, a rubber washer in there that when it slaps down against this metal plate here, keeps it from making a, a loud clack, right? Also in the rear here, you can see these two pan head bolts that they're using here. And they're using the pan head for a reason, because when this claw comes up, if you watch back there, it actually changes the angle and that pan head shape of those bolt heads allow this pivoting to take place. And of course we have the spring up here keeping pressure on the plate. So they put a piece of some kind of a material in it. I'm not sure what that is, but it's, uh, it kind of looks like paper when I first saw it. It's white. I thought, oh, they put some paper in there, but then it's not. It's some kind of a, a plastic or urethane type material that's in there. Right. So that also apparently facilitates it being quiet. Let's see if I can get this a little closer here. Here we go. Right. So let's just look at the claw assembly on the P1 now for comparison. So now we've seen what this one's doing. So let's get you out. All right. Now, again, exact same design, the claw and all. And it's doing the same thing when we turn the shifter, right? And of course, there's a different system up here, but we'll look at that in a second. And you can see the difference in the noise this one's making. All right. So, first off, we can see that if we lift this claw up, there is no there's no rubber. Whoops. Lift up too high, it'll swivel away on you. So there's no rubber under there. That's one place it's clacking. And we don't have the rubber or whatever that is underneath the bolt heads on the back either. So yeah, we're getting more clack when it goes back. And again, if you watch it, push that little pin down that's on the wheel, on the main gear wheel, and then comes back over, and we just let it drop. You can see a much difference noise, and much difference in the noise rather, than when we do it over here. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot different. But we're going to do a little more scientific experiment on the difference between the noise levels of these two shifters as we go along. Right. So now that we have the V1 out, let's look at the actual stops for the claw, and really it's actually the stops for the mechanism behind it, and. That's what's really hitting it. So we've got these two major pins here that make up part of the actual chassis here and actual add in structural integrity to the whole assembly. And what they're doing, obviously, also is stopping. You can see it now. Let's see if you can see it. Hit it. But it's stopping the travel both ways, frontwards. Let's see, I need to go forward here. There we go. And up on that one. Right? So that's also... A louder noise there because if you look over here on the V2 we've actually got silicone tubing what it looks like anyway silicone rubber tubing on those stops so now you know when it hits the stop it's not making as much noise obviously so that's actually the noise right there of it hitting well, it's also hitting this little pin here on the gear but, but you can tell it's a little bit different not a whole lot, though, I don't think. Let's see. Yeah, you can tell it's a little bit higher pitched over here on this one without the rubber. Right. So, now that we know those differences, let's see if what else is different. Well, here we have a bearing. A ball bearing. You can see it riding up. Let's see, maybe you see a little better there on this angle. There it is. Let's do it this way. There we go. So you can see that ball bearing being pushed back up into the housing. And there's a spring behind that, obviously, to keep pushing it back down. Also, pay attention to the actual slope between the teeth on this gear here. They're pretty sharp, actually, compared, and there's a difference, believe it or not, on the other one. So that's the mechanism we're using here. And they've changed that entirely on the version 2. Now, we can't see what's going on. We have to look to the front to see it. But also, if you notice, the profile, it may not be easy to determine from a video, but the profile is actually a little bit less sharp, if you will, 
I could pick both of these up without dropping anything. That would creating another disaster at the SRG. I don't know if we can see this or how I can show you guys this, but uh, there's the reflection on that gear. Let's see if I can get it on this one. So I don't know if you can tell from this, but yeah, the gear here is definitely, there we go. There's a shiny. See how it's kind of rolled in the middle there compared to this one? See how much sharper that one looks? I hope this is coming off on video good, but anyway. That's what the difference is on the actual gear itself. This one is a little bit less sharp, so there's not as a sharp a drop as it comes back over the top and then drops back into the valley. Right, so let's take a look at how this thing is working here. Now, instead of the ball bearing, we've got two, to, uh, two a whole different assembly over there. We've got two locator pins here, and you can see the screws are on top here, and there are no screws on the top of this one. And they're holding these locating pins for this little follower assembly, if you will, that's riding in between them. And when we're pulling this, you can see that snap ring is actually turning this lock ring, this little snap lock ring here, that's locking the cylinder that's holding a, a pin that has a rubber, a really, really hard rubber piece on it. Let me show you here. Hopefully you guys, it'll show up good here. But you'll see the pin behind it there. See that little pin back in there? And this rubber piece is actually on top of that. And the whole assembly obviously turns when the gear turns it. So it's rolling over it instead of a ball bearing falling in and out under spring pressure, you know, just going bang, bang, bang. So this is actually rolling over it in this rubber cylinder. Now, I've been told that you can actually pull this rubber piece off if you want a louder shifter. And I know a lot of people are probably thinking, what do you mean, who would want a louder shifter? But there's some guys out there, believe it or not, that, you know, like a louder shifter. <laughs> At least you have an option here, right? So not only do we have a less aggressive tooth ramp here, but we've also got this thing riding over the teeth. And let's go ahead and see if we can get a good look at that for you guys. So you can see it just riding across there. It's not dropping down as far. So yeah. Pretty cool, actually. The way this whole thing works is pretty cool because, yeah, it, it really imitates the, the best I've ever seen or ever had my hands on one of these, uh, or rather a sequential shifter. Yeah, it definitely replicates the feeling that if we had a sequential shifter, this gear over here would be attached to our rod or our column, whatever you want to call it, that goes across the top of the, the gears in the sequential gearbox and has those different type of little cuts into it that'll move the arms back and forth for gear changes. Anyway, so yeah, that's pretty much it. There's uh, not much else going on here. I mean, there's enough. <laughs> and again, I have it pretty light as far as the friction on this. Let's go the other way. And you can definitely tell there's a difference in the noise, obviously, no doubt, going either way. It's harder to go this way. Well, it's because of the way I was holding it. So yeah. What a great gearbox. It's just, you know, it's it's built like a the proverbial tank, just like the just like the V1 over here, which is again still my favorite sequential shifter. This is not my favorite yet because, well, I haven't run it yet. <laughs> just want to take it, we're gonna go ahead and obviously and put it on the rig and run it and see how it does. But I can tell already it has a different feel because of these deading materials in here, it definitely has a different feel to it compared to what I'm feeling over here on the V1. It's, and I'm not sure, it's more metallic. It's, there's more tactile feedback, that's what it is, on here than there is here. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna feel about that. So I may be one of the guys that wants it louder because I may wanna take this and make it feel more tactile. And that's what, pulling this rubber cylinder off this pin in the front here, get a better look at it. If we actually, we can actually take this step snap ring off, and it is, it is a bit uh, of something, to, it is a bit, you know, you'd have to know, what, you have to be mechanically inclined to do something like this, obviously. We'd have to take this out to relieve all the spring pressure on it, and then we could just take this follower assembly out and, prob and just go ahead and take the rubber piece off by taking this little snap ring off. Take the rubber wheel off, or rubber roller, if you will, and then we'll just have the pin. And I've been told that it's okay to do that and the pin is nine millimeters in diameter and it'll ride just fine inside the teeth of this gear over here. But it'll make more noise. And if you wanted to, you could always
pull out the rubber here on the that little rubber washer there you can pull that off and you can even pull these silicone pieces off if you want to get more tactile feedback so i've been using the v1 for quite a while as some of you may have may know and again quite fond of the way the feel of it is and i've grown used to it so to be honest i'm not exactly sure how i'm gonna feel this this still feels good don't get me wrong it's just you get that little bit more tactical, tactile feedback, it's like the snappiness or metallic feel through this one as I'm rolling it that I do this one. It almost kind of numbs it down a little bit, which would be, you know, I completely expected that with all the dampening going on inside of here now. So yeah, I'm not just, again, I'm not just exactly sure how I feel about that, but once I get it on the chassis and we're running it, then, I'll, I'll have a better idea, of course. Now, also, I'm going to put these on the chassis. I'm going to put the version 1, and then I'm going to take the version 1 off and put the version 2 on. And we're going to take this sound level meter. Aha. And go ahead and put this on a tripod and keep it at the right uh, distance that's equal. And then we're going to swap these two guys out and be a little bit more scientific on how much sound is deadened by the version 2 versus the version 1 over here. So we'll get to that segment next. Just so you guys will know how I did this testing, I have a my antique realistic sound meter mounted to a tripod, and that is at a distance away from the shifter, and the distance will remain the same as I test both of these shifters and we do our sound level test. So I just want to show you guys how I was doing this. All right, now we're ready to do the test on the original V1, if you will, ProSim light shifter and my Radio Shack sound level meter probably needs a calibration but really for we don't really need it for these purposes because all I want to do is see if it moves the needle more and if the, the meter is correct which I'm sure it is then it's going to move more for this shifter which is the original than it will for the other shifter once we get that one mounted so let's go ahead and test this shifter first and see what we get So it looks like it's almost getting to zero, pretty much is getting almost to zero. So yeah, I think that's a pretty good reading. Yeah, I'm going back and forth as you can see in the video and forward and back. All right, we'll just call that around zero. Now what we're gonna do is mount the version two ProSim light shifter and see how that goes. All right, so now we've got the ProSim Lite version 2 mounted, and obviously we're using the exact same hardware, exact, exact same handle. The only thing was I had to, you know, there's no way for me to tell how much force it's taking me to move these handles between the two shifters, so I had to just play with them a little bit and try to get the feel where they felt like I was using the same amount of force on both shifters to make the shift. So again, not very scientific there, but anyway. We'll see what it feels like, or rather what it sounds like on a meter. So let's go ahead and do that. It almost looks like when I'm going forward, It's a little bit quieter than going backwards. That's backwards there. Looks like it goes past the two a little bit. I don't know. Very close though. All right, so obviously I'm only hitting the two when we're using the V2. Yeah, how, how appropriate. <laughs> the ProSim V2 shifter. So yeah, obviously it is quieter. And not only that, but if you notice the sound on this, the tink tink is gone because we know the other claw plate that is in the version one doesn't have the rubber dampening behind the bolts like we saw in the other segment. And it doesn't have the rubber washer underneath it. So when it snaps back, it really muffles it. So we don't get that tink tink feel, but it still seems to be like a, a good feel as far as sequential shifting, like you're really doing something as far as, again, turning this electro shaft on a real sequential transmission. So what we're going to do next is obviously get in and drive it and see how it feels. 
All right, so now for the driving portion of the sound test, and I'm gonna stay mostly out of this so you guys can hear the shifter. This is the V1. And there's the familiar sound of the V1. It emits kind of like this, I wanna call it a tinking noise when you make your shifts on the V1. Now for the V2. Back to the V1 once more. And once more for the V2. Okay, so I think it's pretty easy that to see the difference, or rather hear the difference, between both of these shifters. I think everyone will have no problem with that. The V1, to me, again, has that high-pitched tinking noise that is absent in the V2 version of the shifter. And that is because the claw is what's causing this noise. That metal plate that forms the claw is actually slapping as it returns from turning the gear. It's slapping back up against the gear face and also back up against the metal that forms the, the rocker mechanism for the actual shift lever. Now, obviously in the V2, if you've watched the portion of the video where I was taking a closer look, you know that there's a lot of dampening in there. We have rubber, a rubber washer under the claws guide pin and also some rubber under the pan head bolts that are holding the back of the claw plate. And of course we have the rubber roller and different spacing on the gear and the rubber sleeves on top of the stops for the gear stop. Now, that also causes something else. Not only is it quieter, it's easy to see that it is quieter, but it also dampens the tactile feedback that you get from the sequential shifter. There's a more metallic or, I don't know how, do how to say this, more of a intense feel of metal to metal contact on the V1 versus the V2. Now both of them still feel great. These are, you know, with the mechanisms inside of this shifter that are operating, it just feels great. It's the best sequential shifter I've ever used, to date anyway. And yeah, that tradition continues on with the V2. It's just quieter and not as quiet as a intense metal to metal feel in the tactile feedback. And of course, that is totally subjective and up to personal preference on which one you would prefer. But anyway, obviously there's a dip, big difference in the sound here to me. I don't know about you guys listening to, or to the sounds. And also, I want to make sure you knew that how I recorded this, the camera never changed its difference, and, uh, as, its distance rather, from the shifter position. And you can see that when we're going back and forth between the two shifters, the monitors never move. And the microphones on the camera is what recorded the actual sounds. So. I think it's clear here that we can see that the V2 is definitely a quieter, more stealthier version of the ProSim shifter. And again, it's great to see that ProSim is actually listening to people who had concerns about the noise levels for this particular shifter. And yeah, it is loud. There's no doubt about it. And the V2 is definitely much quieter. But again, it is a different feel as far as the tactile part of it. And that's all personal preference too, like I said before. So I could go with either one, to be honest with you. And I'm sure that now that you see how the V1 and the, the V2 differences are implemented in the dampening, you know, I could actually go with my V1 and just put a rubber washer under that claw and maybe some rubber underneath the pan head screws and probably be happy just with that noise silenced or quieter than it was before. But again, this is all subjective stuff that I'm talking about now. And what we'll do next is just go ahead and get to the final thoughts on the new ProSim Lite V2 shifter.
Final thoughts on the Pro Sim Lite version 2 sequential shifter. As you may know, I have been using the original version of this shifter for quite some time now. It is the best sequential shifter I have used to date. The new or version 2 of the light shifter continues to deliver the goods when it comes to sequential shifting simulation. And now, addresses the noise concerns of some potential users out there. The V1 shifter certainly isn't known for its stealthiness when it comes to using it in close quarters. Now, there are many ways to go about making this shifter quieter, and I think that ProSim has done a good job when it comes to the design changes that were required to lower the noise level that the old shifter has. Moving from a ball bearing riding in an aggressively toothed gear to a rubber roller mated to a more gentle gear profile has made a noticeable difference in the gear noise. But the most noticeable difference came from installing a rubber washer on the guide pin under the claw plate and sound deadening material under the pan head bolts. No more tink tink noise when shifting. Of course, you can add to the new shifter stealthiness by mounting it to sound deadening materials. And ProSim's website has a link in the description of the new shifter to a company that makes this material specifically for metal to metal mounting situations. And there are a lot more materials out there that would do the same thing. Uh, MDF is one that comes to mind. Now, as you might imagine, all this dampening that the new shifter has does affect the feel of shifts when you compare it to the V1 light shifter. But I have tried a few things to bring some of that tactile feel back, like removing the tubes from the shifter stops. You can also remove the rubber roller that rides in the gear, revealing a 9mm metal pin that will make the, that part of the shifter feel more crisp. But of course, this would come back to your personal preference but it's nice that you have options to tweak this shifter to your own taste. It's good to see companies like ProSim listening to their customers and coming up with new ideas to improve on an already great piece of sim racing hardware. I'm Barry Rowland, and thanks for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. And don't forget to subscribe and visit our website at simracinggarage.com.